Hi there, my name's Starling. I am a clinical aromatherapist, and today I am going to be reviewing Avon's Pure Detox Roll-On Essential Oil Blend. The regular price is $22 Canadian, and as of December 2020, it's on sale for $19. The product number is 2216318. It comes in a 10 milliliter roll-on bottle. So let's read what they say on their website about the product. Start fresh. Awaken your senses with this fresh and fortifying aroma. It's like hitting reset. Roll directly onto your skin. Topical applications also enable you to benefit from inhalation of the blend. Pop it in your pocket to use at any time. These expertly crafted, highly concentrated, pure plant-derived oils are safe, easy to use, vegan and paraben, gluten, phthalate and sulfate free. Enjoy the benefits of premium quality, pure essential oils made in Canada, 10 milliliters. Read and follow the label directions and precautions. Okay, and then we're going to read what is inside it. So Prunus amygdalis dulcis is sweet almond kernel oil, Juniperus communis fruit oil, that's juniper berry, citrus limon unpeel oil, that is lemon, mentha piperita twig flowering oil, so that's peppermint, phoniculum vulgar seed oil, which is sweet fennel, Rosemarianus officialis, which is rosemary leaf extract, Santalum speciatum, which is sandalwood oil. So the first issue I have is in their third paragraph where they say that these are highly concentrated. I really hope they're not. Um, and they're not because they are diluted with sweet almond oil, but this is sort of a false advertising buzzword kind of washing saying things that you think that people want to hear when they're buying something. And a lot of people are um, uneducated when it comes to the reality of essential oils. And this is just playing into that. You do not want to be applying highly concentrated essential oils onto your skin. So to me, that's an immediate uh, X beside it. So I win one point, they lose theirs. <laughs> And uh, no, I have a problem with that. The other one that's even worse is that they say these plant-derived oils are safe. <gasps> no, they're not. No, they're not. And there are two in here that are really, really not classified as safe. And one might surprise you. Um, no. And that's my big problem is essential oils in general are not safe. People think that because things are plant-derived, that means they're safe. No. I have what's called a baneful garden. In there, I have things like mandrake. I have belladonna. I have um, foxglove and monkshood and detura. All of those are highly toxic plants, and they can kill you. So when they say something like, these plant-derived oils are safe... There's so much wrong with that, even though it's just a few words. No, essential oils on a whole are not safe. Just saying. And there's definitely unsafe oils within this. Let's start looking at the ingredients now. So the first one, and this one I am classifying under the kind of not safe department, is the sweet almond oil. Sweet almond oil is an allergen. Now, unlike another product of theirs that I reviewed, this doesn't say it's hyperallergenic. Thank you. Because it's not. And the very first ingredient makes it that. Sweet almond oil is generally safe to use. However, people who are allergic to almonds can have reactions from the oil itself. Now, I hope that if you have an allergy to almond that you're aware of this, but um, they could have used something like safflower oil or castor oil or jojoba or something that is even less likely to cause issues with people. Sweet almond oil also has a very short shelf life. Um, unopened, it can last about a year, a little bit more if it's kept in the right conditions. But after it's opened, it's only good for about six months. And you have to consider how long this bottle has been sitting 
in the Avon warehouse because that counts as well. So after you would buy this oil, I'd say you need to use it up in a month. You can probably um, extend the life of it by keeping it in the fridge. But as they say, you can put it in your pocket. Um, that would make it go by faster. And there's essential oils in here that are not going to help keep it lasting longer. So um, there's that. So the first essential oil is juniper berry oil. Say those are my juniper bushes. And um it's okay. The recommended amount for skin application for juniper oil is 0.05%. You can go up to 0.8% if it's a perfume, but this does not qualify as a perfume because this is something that you're leaving directly on your skin. So this is more in line with a lotion something that is being directly applied and being left on. And this is the first essential oil that they have in their lineup. And it should not be at more than 0.05%. So personally, I really, really hope that the person who wrote up the label misplaced this. And after looking at the other labels that Avon has on their website for their essential oil um, concoctions, I wouldn't be surprised if that's what happened because it's pretty bad. There's some uh, oils and blends on here where you click on ingredients and it just says like lavender, not even English lavender or French lavender, let alone the botanical name, just lavender. So I wouldn't be surprised if this is actually not the actual first ingredient. And I would really hope that it's not because you can't get a lot of it. <laughs> and that would mean that all the other essential oils are even less than 0.05%, which again would also contradict their highly concentrated statement. So meh. the issues with juniper is that it is um, sometimes been found to be adulterated with fermented fruit, juniper, wood oil, turpentine oil, terrine hydrocarbon fractions. It also oxidizes really easily. Excessive use of juniper oil can irritate your kidneys and even cause damage due to the terpene for all along with the alpha pinene, which can be very um, hazardous once the product is oxidized. The next oil is lemon essential oil. They don't say if this was expressed or distilled. I'm assuming expressed because that's the most common uh, way to get your citrus oils. And so that's done in a cold process, kind of like, um, like cold process extra virgin olive oil concept. I do have a video that I did where I explain the different ways that you, that you make essential oils where I talk about this a bit more in depth. So lemon expressed essential oil should be as a cosmetic uh, dilution, so going directly onto your skin, at a 0.15% and at a 1% in perfume. Again, this is not a perfume. It's classified as a cosmetic because it's going directly onto your skin. Uh, lemon is prone to adulteration with natural and synthetic limonene, natural and synthetic citral, and orange and lemon terpenes. Um, those are all pretty fine uh, for you. They're not dangerous, but again, um, they're adulterate, adulterations. So the oil has them and they are saying these things are pure and it's questionable because it's not unheard of at all for these things to be in there. So just so you know. Now, lemon does have a low risk for phototoxicity, but it's still recommended to avoid sunlight um, exposure to the areas of the skin that you applied this on for 12 hours. So do not put this on your skin and then go worship Amaterasu. You're going to get a really bad sunburn. Um, it also can get oxidized easily. Citrus oils in general, especially expressed ones over distilled, do have a very short shelf life. And um, they can become skin sensitizing once they're oxidized. That means that you can develop a reaction over time to an oil. So you can start out fine. And then after applying it so many times, suddenly you're getting a rash or something like that. Um, due to the plus limonene content in the essential oils of the expressed lemon, it should be kept in a tight, dark bottle in the fridge, 
But then again, that should be done because of the sweet almond and also from the juniper. So this really should be kept in a cold, dark place. And I don't know if they're doing that at the Avon warehouse. So by the time that you even receive this oil from them, it could already be turned. Next essential oil is one of the dangerous ones that most people don't realize, and that's peppermint essential oil. And I am working on a deep dive into it right now for a video. I do have a little video out uh, involving peppermint essential oil and a certain enzyme deficiency. You can check that out on my channel. And I will talk about a little bit more as we go along with this. But first, uh, the recommended amount of peppermint essential oil for cosmetic application is 0.01%. 0.1% in perfumes. So you do not want a lot of this. And although um, peppermint is not phototoxic, it too should be avoided when you go worship the autumn. You don't want to be having this on your skin in high temperatures, going to tanning beds, or even things like saunas. It too can be skin sensitizing, so again, developing a reaction to it. It's a possible neurotoxin, uh, choleretic, which means that it can cause your liver to um, create more bile. And for the average individual, having that happen once is not the end of the world. But um, certain conditions, you really don't want that to happen. And even if you don't have those conditions, but you're having this happen a lot, you can um, to begin to um, get things like bile salts or bilirubin absorbed into your bloodstream. And that's kind of how you get jaundice. So you really need to consider this. If you have liver problems, avoid anything with peppermint, not just essential oils that you're putting on your skin. Peppermint um, is found all over the place. I, I'm pretty sure that unless you live in the middle of nowhere, you come in contact with a product that has peppermint essential oil in it or a derivative from peppermint like menthol. And if you have liver problems, amongst other issues, you should be aware of this and consider that when you're choosing to put things in or on your body. Um, so that's fun. Also, it should never, and I need to yell right now, never be placed on or near the face of children under the age of five. And I'm going to make an amendment to this that it shouldn't be done to even adults who are not physically capable of blowing their own nose. So um, perhaps somebody in a coma or people who are severely, severely um, affected by birth defects to the point that they have the capacity of a small child, um, you shouldn't put them it on or near them either. So let's say, for example, you work in a nursing home or a group home with people who are severely mentally delayed, and one of them has a cold, and you think you might help by putting some peppermint essential oil or eucalyptus too this counts for eucalyptus as well and some other ones um in a diffuser or maybe even diluted on their chest like a Vicks vapor rub idea don't please don't because what can happen is it can cause a glottal spasm it can cause the uh, mucus in the sinuses to run very fast and if you can't physically cough it out snort it back, don't pretend that's gross, we all do it, or blow your nose, you could potentially drown in your own mucus. And so young children and people who are not physically capable of even realizing that they have to clear out their sinuses and their throats and they're laying down, it could cause some severe, severe issues and can even kill them. This is one of the reasons why you're not supposed to put your head back when you have a nosebleed. Um, please don't do this. I did this with my son when he was little and I am now officially terrified. So people who should be avoiding peppermint oil straight out are the usual bre pregnant or breastfeeding women. Um, the unusual is um, 
if you suffer from cardiac fibrillations. I do. I have an innocent heart murmur, and every so often it does funny things. Now, mine's fine, but if you have actual more dangerous heart issues, even doing something like smoking menthol cigarettes can be more dangerous to you than smoking regular cigarettes. Not encouraging either, but you need to be aware of how much menthol and peppermint and even something called corn mint or Japanese peppermint, which is a whole thing, I'm going to get into that in a different video, um, can cause problems for you. Um, simply taking that mint from the restaurant after you're done eating can be problematic if it has peppermint essential oil in it, and it probably does. So, um, be aware of that. If you have heart issues, you need to be aware of how much peppermint essential oil or menthol derivatives you are exposing yourself to. Another one that is a little bit more unknown, and I this is the one I did the video on, is G6PD deficiency. So um, I'm not, not going to get into super deep detail because I have a video on that, but um, if G6PD deficiency is an inherited disease most commonly found amongst West African, Middle Eastern, Mediterranean, or Chinese men, and it causes the blood to not make enough or make um, inadequately potent um, G6PD, which protects the red blood cells and therefore the red blood cells um, deteriorate really quickly. It's kind of like Crohn's or celiac where you can live a pretty decent life until you're exposed to something that triggers this and then you will go through a period of time where you're feeling ill. It can range from simply being tired all the time to developing jaundice in anemias. So it's something to be aware of. Um, if you have gastroesophageal reflux disease, you should be aware of how much peppermint you're being exposed to. So the second essential oil that is super duper dangerous is the sweet fennel. And I don't know why... Avon has a thing for it because it's also found in three other products. They're De-Stress and they're Zen along with this one. And I don't know why. I think somebody at head office really likes the smell of it or something. And I get it. I love Hoewood. It's not the safest oil in the world, but I really, really like it. Smells like rosewood, price like cedarwood. I love that. But it's not the safest. And sweet fennel is ridiculously unsafe, especially for a generic product that you're saying is plant-derived uh, oils are safe. No, 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 no. I the Sweet fennel is the type of essential oil that you should only be using in, in a form of like prescribed matter from a person who actually knows what the hell they're talking about because it has problems. And we're going to talk about that. So, um, the first issue with fennel is it kind of has a reputation for being used by women and women's issues. So we're going to start talking about, you know, periods and stuff. Um, so the first problem with it is that it can cause a reproductive hormone modulation, which translates to it can affect your reproductive organs and hormones and stuff. So things like slowing down uterine contractions, which is fine if you're having really bad cramps, but shouldn't be used in labor. And for some reason, people use sweet fennel in labor. You're just slowing things down. Don't do it. Um, that's a thing. I've never heard of that one before. I, I, I became a clinical aromatherapist. I'm like, why would you be using those? Anyways, um, it can cause um, breast formation in prepubescent girls, which is really not good. And the scariest part about this is that it can encourage the growth of estrogen-related tumors, which means that it can make your breast cancer tumor grow larger. This is a product that is being sold by a company that claims to be a company for women and has a cancer foundation. And they're selling this and they're saying it's safe. No, it's not. It also is possibly a carcinogenic, which means it could potentially create cancers. 
and it can inhibit blood clotting and does the old skin sensitization. So again, you can begin to react neg negatively by, from this product on your skin. It should be avoided by pregnant and nursing women, of course. Um, if you have endometriosis, if you have, again, estrogen-dependent cancers, but also, for example, if you get breast cysts and other things, this can aggravate it. Children under the age of five, those who are on diabetic or anticoagulant medications. If you've had uh, major surgery recently, peptic ulcers have or carry the gene for hemophilia and other bleeding disorders along with, and again, this is something that really makes me mad because they say that these oils are safe, is if you have epilepsy, you should not be using sweet fennel oil. The maximum dermal recommendation is 0.01%. And due to the E-anethyl content, it also oxidizes easily. So again, we keep shortening the lifespan of this product. So there's that. So the rosemary in this product is not an essential oil. It's an extract, which is different. Um, I had a little WTF moment when I read this and I went to the websites I go to to get soap making supplies because I make soap and they had two different forms of it. There's a liquid and a powder. The liquid is to be labeled according to INCI guidelines as rosemary oliperson extract. The powder is rosemary anis officialis bracket rosemary and bracket leaf extract, which is what's labeled on this product. But I have an issue with this because this is a roller product. Why would you be using a powder in here? So personally, I think that it's a mislabel. Um... Avon does this a lot on their websites, especially in their aromatherapy section, where things are just not correctly labeled. And I really think this is what happened here because there's, the, there's no point to the powder for this product. One, it would gunk it all up. It's a roller. Why would you have a powder in there? The other thing is that the powdered form is used for cosmetic properties like skin elasticity, slowing the signs of aging, helping to tone due to its astringent properties, which is fine if this was an actual lotion, but this is a topical aromatherapy essential oil thingamajig. So, and it's in a roller. While the um, liquid rosemary extract has the um, properties of being kind of like a preservative. It doesn't help with stopping the formation of mold or bacteria, things like that in the product. What it does is it helps um, oils from going rancid. So not only would this help um, maintain the quality of the sweet almond oil within this blend, by not having it go rancid. So you could probably get um, at least to the six month point once opening, if not a bit further, but also as an antioxidant. So it will also help maintain the, um, the quality of the essential oils. So uh, this is what that is. It's totally fine. It's natural. It's safe. I haven't found any information saying otherwise on it. Um, so yeah, that's what that is. So the sandalwood that they're using in this essential oil blend is not East Indian sandalwood. It's something called Western Australian sandalwood. It doesn't quite have the same con controversy as East Indian or rosewood does, but it still has its issues. It did go to be over harvested in the 1800s, cutting back much of its population. There is a little marsupial called a woe I think I'm pronouncing that right, although I'm probably not. And it really, I mean, really likes to eat the seeds of Australian Western sandalwood. And also the seeds, uh, their germination is dependent on the El Nino effect. 
Now, uh, today, there is productions of this oil being made that are being overseen and managed by various members of Aborigine nations, so that's really cool. So if you are interested in buying the sandalwood, you should see if you can get one that uh, says that it has been made by them, because we should try to support their communities. I don't know if they have to have a license to harvest how they do with um, East Indian sandalwood but it is something that does need to be conserved so going and buying it you should do that only with um a lot of thought before you do because um this is a plant that is endangered so something to think about now as for the safety of this oil there's not a lot of study gone into it too much yet and so i couldn't find out the dermal percentage recommendations um Although this is a very expensive oil, well, not very, it's still pretty, it's, it, it's on the expensive side. There's worse, but it's still up there and it is the last ingredient on the list. So I doubt that there's a lot going into it. Um, so there's that. So it's probably safe. Now, the issue with Western Australian sandalwood is mostly if it's been ingested. However, we still absorb things through our skin. And the issue that this oil has has to do with your liver functions regarding a specific enzyme and how it metabolizes certain drugs. So um, essentially how this works is there's various enzymes in your liver that go after certain toxins. And some essential oils affect their ability to do that. Now, in a way, everything's toxic to us. That's why we have skin. Skin is the first barrier. But things like your liver and your kidneys filter out poisons for you. Um, they detox your body, which is why you really don't need tea or juice to detox your body. Your liver and kidneys do the job all on their own. However, their efficiency for being able to do this and getting the toxins out can be affected by certain things. So the toxins that are in your drugs, everything's a toxin to your body to some degree. I'm not talking about things that like these drugs have cyanide in them. I'm just meaning just what's in there has to get metabolized out of your body. Otherwise it could hurt you. But certain essential oils can affect the enzymes in your body and their ability to do that, making you susceptible to the dangers of them. I hope that makes sense. So if your liver is functioning fine, this isn't something you need to worry about on a regular basis. But if you take certain drugs and you overuse certain essential oils, uh, it can be a problem. And then if you add on to that, if you have liver issues, then you can be in a big problem. And though... Um, our skin does filter things out, so the risk of having issues with this are rare, especially since there's probably not a lot of this oil in it. I'm still going to mention them. So if you take one of these drugs, you have the knowledge and the ability to choose for yourself if you think this product is safe for you to use. So I'm going to list off the various drugs. I'm also going to put them up on the screen here because I'm sure I'm going to mispronounce them. The enzyme that is affected by Western Australian sandalwood is CYP2D6. So the drugs are alprenol, amphetamine, amitriptyline, carvedilol, codeine, chlorpheniramin, Clomipramine, donazepil, fluvoxamine, fluoxetine, halopuridol, imipramine, lidocaine class 1b, mixilitine class 1b, metuchlorpromidine, ondancitron, paroxetine, finacetine, promethazine, propranol, Cipartine class 1A, tamoxifen, thioridazine, and tropishitron. And I'm sure I hardly said any of those correctly. But um, so those are the drugs that uh, can be affected if you use too much of the uh, Western Australian sandalwood. 
Um, again, it's more likely to have effects if you're ingesting it, but if you're overdosing yourself on this oil or with this blend, it could interact with your um, medications and your body's ability to metabolize them safely. So in the end, would I use this product? No. Would I recommend this product in my practice to a client? No, I think that the sweet fennel oil is absolutely unnecessary and carries too big of a risk to use as a general sell it to anybody with no questions asked sort of a product. Um, as for the peppermint, peppermint is, isn't the worst in the world. If you're educated, you can tell if whether or not it's something you should use or if you are an aromatherapist or a clinical aromatherapist you should be educated enough just in your practice to know what to ask when it comes to people's preconditions and drug interactions but to be selling this with no warning on the website or in the catalog because again this is not something that you can just go down to the local drugstore and get because it's sold by a specific company and they don't have a storefront. Although I did hear that there are some Avon storefronts apparently, but I, I don't never seen them, but apparently they do exist. Um, but no, I would not recommend this. I would not use this. I give it a cold, wet and stormy day out of five Amaterasu's. So um, if you have any questions, you can feel free to leave a comment below. Uh, if you want to talk privately, just say something and we'll get into a private conversation. If you have any products that you think I should review, uh, please leave them below because I absolutely enjoy doing this so much. Uh, maybe I'm just so cynical when it comes to advertising now that I, I just love picking things apart like this. Uh, so yes, if you have any questions, comments, queries, concerns, or suggestions, leave them below. And always remember... For the love of Queen Himiko, don't eat essential oils.